Diablos need healing! Stop! <gasps> Dios mio! That's right, I'm speaking to you. You're about to make a critical mistake with that item purchase, my friend. No! I am magnificent! Rejuvenate doesn't work that way anymore, Fernando. Let me teach you the way. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is Andrew Chicken, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking all about the brand new Rejuvenate rework that just dropped in the Tidal Surge update. This is quite a controversial item rework, and it doesn't work the way it used to pretty much at all. And it takes some getting used to, and a lot of people don't didn't even know that it happened, because, well, the wording is very similar to the old Rejuvenate, but it doesn't work like the old Rejuvenate at all. And, well, if you're playing a tank... First and foremost, you need to stop buying this item. I know, what? But isn't Rejuve like the number one best item on tanks? Well, not anymore. So let's just get the cat out of the bag and talk about what they actually changed. Rejuvenate used to increase the healing received from other players by up to 30%. Now it increases your healing output by up to 30%, and it excludes healing from lifesteal effects. So, a simple wording change, but it means a whole lot, because now all of a sudden, the champions which buy this item have completely shifted, there are some brand new build opportunities, but also, well, it actually got a whole lot weaker. So, if I'm playing Fernando here, <laughs> Fernando doesn't do any healing whatsoever. So, I would not buy Rejuvenate for this character. Now, granted, uh, Fernando does have some healing cards. For example, I could swap out Hot Pursuit for Brand if I wanted to and heal on my Fireball, and Rejuvenate would actually affect that. So if I just briefly put this in at level 5, right, you see that we hit a 500 healing Fireball. Boom, boom, and there we go, 500 health. But if I buy Rejuvenate, this increases my healing output from the Fireball. So I get shot again, and then boom, we get 650 healing, so 30% more healing from the Fireball, which is all pretty nifty, right? Uh, but it's certainly not valuable to run this item on Fernando, even if you are using Brand, because ultimately the amount of healing you get from Brand, or any of his healing cards, over the course of a fight, does not justify spending all these credits on Rejuvenate. <gasps> Instead, the characters that should be buying Rejuvenate now are characters who do a lot of healing output, which are mainly supports, but also a few other characters we will talk about in a moment. So, a character like Ceres, right? The I most popular support the in the game. Uh, let me run Soul Collector just so you can see uh, the healing numbers a bit better. So, I have not locked in my Rejuvenate purchase yet. You can see on Fernando here, I am doing, well, 165 per tick. But then if I refresh the item store, and then I heal him again, we're up to 214 per tick, which is a sizable healing increase. So now, instead of the tanks or anyone else who wants increased healing buying Rejuvenate, it is now the support who must buy Rejuvenate. But... It gets even more complicated than that, because an unlisted effect of this Rejuvenate rework is that the Rejuvenate item no longer combats Cauterize. So let me explain what that means. The old Rejuvenate would increase healing received by up to 30%, and that's stacked additively against Cauterize. So Cauterize, or anti-healing, right? That would scale up to 90% in late game, but then if you bought Rejuvenate 3, you would basically chop 30% off of that, and turn 90% anti-healing into 60% healing. And this would quadruple your healing output in late game, because you would go from 10% anti-healing, or a 10% effective healing output, right, to 40% effective healing output. So it was a very, 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 very powerful item for that reason in particular. It doesn't do that anymore. So, if this Fernando right here is under the effects of Cauterize, it will increase the healing output of Ceres by 30%, but then it'll reduce that collective value by 90%. So the amount of healing you get in late game when someone is affected by Cauterize is significantly lower than before with Rejuvenate. And it's a very important balance change because now, well, if the support is the only one who needs to buy this item, then you have significantly fewer people investing significantly fewer credits into this item, so if they kept that in the game, it would be a lot stronger. And also, the fact that Old Rejuvenate had this effect made supports pretty hard to balance in general, so now healing is going to be a lot more uniform, but you can still increase your healing in this manner. Now, it's very important to note, because this does have some people confused, 
Champions like Inara and Nyx, right? Inara and Nyx both effects? have increased healing effects. Inara, when you pop Earthen Guard, right, when you press this button, she gets, what is it, 30% increased healing? It doesn't say here. She gets increased healing. I think it's 30%. That still functions like the old Rejuvenate, right? Rejuvenate the item is not the same thing now as these increased healing effects that come from abilities like Inara's Earthen Guard, Nyx's Passive, and also many of the other increased healing uh, cards, such as, well, we can go back to Fernando, he has a card, right? Immovable Object, increase your healing received from others while t by 20% while at or below 50% health. This still cuts back against Cauterize, so Immovable Object will still turn 90% anti-healing down to 70%. So all these cards, all these passives remain exactly the same. The only thing that has changed is the actual item now. That's the only thing affected here. So man, this really sucks for supports then, doesn't it? Because A, the effect of Rejuvenate has just gotten much weaker, but B, supports also now have another mandatory item to buy, right? Because I need to buy Kronos and Rejuvenate on my supports now, on top of whatever else I already needed, such as Unbound, uh, Armor Plating, Morale Boost, anything like that, right? Doesn't this really suck? Well, yeah, kind of. <laughs> it kind of does. But also... Uh, rejuvenate isn't going to be as necessary as you might think for certain supports, and certain supports may want to prioritize Rejuvenate over Chronos, but other supports may want to still prioritize Chronos over Rejuvenate. And I think this really depends on how the healing is delivered, and generally which support you're playing, right? Because some supports uh, simply don't need Chronos, while others heavily depend on it. So Saris, for example, if I am playing Soul Collector... I don't really need Kronos, right? Because my heal already has a one and a half second cooldown. That is tiny. Look, I can get right back to healing Fernando. There's barely any downtime at all. So on Soul Collector Saris, yeah, Rejuvenate is just a straight increase. Especially because it also improves, by the way, the healing you get from Rensoul. Boom. Because, yeah, that's also part of your healing output. So, yeah, that's a double, doubly nice bonus. But if I am playing Forsake, for example, which increases the cooldown to 3 seconds, then maybe I'd want to prioritize Kronos a little bit more. But a more clear-cut example of that is Pip. Pip has two distinct playstyles that both would either want to prioritize Rejuvenate or Kronos, depending on what you pick. So Combat Medic is a, uh, a very interesting healing playstyle because it's not cooldown-based at all. Combat Medic allows you to heal your teammates with your weapon shots. Just like this. Boom. Bam. Bop. So, yeah, I don't need Chronos for that at all. I can just instantly lock in Rejuvenate, and now I'm doing 910 healing per shot. And yes, Chronos helps with Potion Uptime, but Potion Uptime is far less important on Combat Medic, because, you know, your weapon shots are doing m the majority of the healing. And, you know, with Reload and good healing positioning anyways, you'll still have pretty decent uptime. On the flip side, if you're playing Mega Potion, certainly Rejuvenate is helpful, don't get me wrong. But Mega Potion desperately needs increased uh, cooldown reduction because yeah. the cooldown of Mega Potion is really long and it's your only form of healing. So I can throw this at Fernando, and he gets a whopping 2600 healing. That is phenomenal. But without Kronos, the uptime on this is going to be very low, especially now that I don't have a reload proc. Look at how long I'm going without uh, being able to heal this Fernando. He almost died, and that's with me actually killing the Cassie bot, too. So. You're actually going to have to have a little bit of strategy now on which supports you want to buy Kronos versus Rejuvenate on. And yes, you could theoretically buy both, but you shouldn't really need to prioritize both all of the time. And another thing is, if you're playing a character who's heavily dependent on Kronos over Rejuvenate, you might be able to just get away with skipping Rejuvenate entirely, if the situation calls for it. Because sometimes, Rejuvenate won't provide as much of a benefit as you need, uh, but then another item will provide even more benefit. So let's say I'm done maxing out Kronos, and it's late game, and the enemy team has a bunch of crowd control. Well, why the heck would I waste my time spending credits on Rejuvenate when I could buy Unbound instead? And, well, <laughs> my team is going to get marginal a marginal healing boost from Rejuvenate, but I'll be dying a lot more if I don't buy Unbound, and me being alive more means my team ends up getting more healing than what Rejuvenate can provide, so I should buy Unbound instead, right? That's generally the thought process now on those supports who really rely on Kronos, like Pip, 
or a Grover or anyone like that. All right, so now let's talk about the edge case champions. These are champions that are not necessarily supports, but can still benefit pretty heavily from Rejuvenate. And let's start off with Sky, who is basically the only non-support who can still heal her team and actually do a really fantastic job at it. She's pretty much as good of a healer as Genos, to be totally honest, in the right comp. It's... It's very silly. Yeah, Smoke and Dagger allows you to heal your teammates for 100 healing per second while on smoke screen, and then with Healing Vapors you can buff that up even more, and when you combine that with Rejuvenate you're able to actually achieve some pretty impressive healing numbers. So let me just throw this on Fernando, show you the base healing numbers. 70 per tick, yeah not bad. By Rejuvenate, and it goes up to 91 per tick, which is actually quite good, because bear in mind... Okay, we did let Fernando die there, but this is an area of effect heal that also affects Sky directly. So even if you're playing kind of selfish Sky, if you're playing Smoke and Dagger, it's still worth it to go for Rejuvenate, because you're able to get so much extra healing out of it, right? And you can just use it whenever you have so many smoke bombs, right, because of your build. You can kind of just pop it down, heal yourself up really quickly wherever. So, it really makes a lot of sense to run this on Sky if you're playing Smoke and Dagger with the Healing Vapors playstyle. If you're not playing that playstyle, then don't buy it. Obviously. We also have Bulk Up Buck, which is another character that is able to do a lot of healing to himself. And we pop this without Rejuvenate. We're able to get basically back up to 2,000 health from being near death. But if I go ahead and lock in Rejuvenate and then get shot thrice again... One, two, three... We are able to pretty much full heal, so we're able to get a lot of extra healing out of that. Now, is that worth it? <laughs> I don't know, you be the judge of that. With a 5 second cooldown on recovery, you're certainly going to be getting that much healing quite a lot. If you can pop it when you're outside of Cauterize, that extra healing may be the difference between life or death in your next fight. Uh, it's, it's an interesting idea. So, it's something to consider. It would certainly be better on Bulk Up Buck than a lot of other flanks and damage champions, but I'm kind of on the fence about it because it is still kind of like right on the brink of, eh, is it good, is it not, I don't know. Khan is another champion who can really benefit from Rejuvenate, because of course he has his Battle Shot, which heals him and all nearby allies for quite a chunky burst of healing. And, well, we can exploit this quite substantially because we can buy Rejuvenate, but we can also use a very silly card that at least, you know, it won't affect Khan's teammates, but it'll affect himself. We can run Hold the Line for an additional amount of healing. Not like the most popular Khan card ever, but if you really want to be silly and push the healing to the max, then you know that's a thing, right? And then we can also lock in a Rejuvenate buy and then just get shot a bunch. Three, uh, four, yeah, that's pretty good. And then... <laughs> Play Mega Potion Khan? Ah, yes. 2,100 health battle shout. Fair and balanced. And that's also really reliable, too, because, well, there's the contact where you can just hold up your shield, wait for Cauterize to expire, and then you can battle shout and get all the healing for free, even in late game, as long as you make sure there aren't any enemies behind you or above you that are still able to apply Cauterize. Now, I have an extremely silly idea here. We're really stretching. We're, we're scraping at the bottom of the barrel here. Uh, Dredge actually has pretty good self-healing cards. And we can, well, buff that up with Rejuvenate, too. I know most champions don't have good self-healing cards, but, like, you know, Harpoon, able to heal us for quite a lot. Oh, yeah, and I forgot. I have a card in this build that increases my healing already when I'm at low HP, so we can stack that with Rejuvenate. Uh, shoot me again. Boom, boom. Boom, and then let's get Rejuvenate, lock in the purchase. I mean, 568, 569 Harpoon, 455 Harpoon, that's pretty good! You know, considering his fire rate, that's that's a lot of healing. It's a way to amplify the healing on your Hurl, which technically isn't lifesteal. It functions basically as lifesteal, but it's just a flat heal for each enemy you hit with Harpoon, so Rejuvenate still works on it. Uh, bear in mind, Rejuvenate doesn't work on lifesteal effects, like it says here. But it absolutely does work on, you know, this card, or any similar card that provides a flat heal rather than actual lifesteal. Alright, enough silly ideas and scraping the bottom of the barrel. The first few were actually pretty good ideas, but, uh, I mean... <laughs> Uh, the, buy Rejuvenate on Dredge at your own peril, okay? It's kind of a meme, but it's an idea of something you can do. It's something silly that's possible with the new Rejuve that wasn't possible before. But now I want to talk about some things that are broken, that don't work, even though they actually should work. Uh, starting with, of course, Rom. Now, Rom is one of the first characters I jumped to as a character who would heavily benefit from the Rejuvenate buff, or uh, Rejuvenate rework, excuse me. And that's because Rom actually has some of the most healing output in the entire game. 
it's just all done to himself, right? It's Most of it isn't done to his teammates unless you play subservience. So this healing output is, yeah, really consistent. I mean, if we just start shooting at the Cassies, right? I'm constantly healing myself up with these soul fragments. I can press this for a big burst. It is a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of healing right, output. But it actually just, it doesn't work with Rejuvenate for some reason. So l let me show you exactly what I mean. Let's wait for the Soul Harvest to expire. There we go. Okay, press Soul Harvest. We go from 5,250 health without Rejuvenate to 7,250 health. Now, let me lock in Rejuvenate. Ooh, just barely enough credits for that. And let the Soul Harvest expire again. I just realized that's completely synchronized with the cooldown of Soul Harvest. That's actually pretty cool. But yeah, check this out. Now with Rejuvenate, yes, perish. we hit the same number. So it doesn't work as well with Soul Harvest as it should. Now, bear in mind, of course, if you run Shattered Essence, it should still work with this card because it's a flat heal on top of your soul armor. And also it should work with Subservience, right? Because, well, that's also just healing done properly. It's normal healing right to our teammates there. Now, another thing that I can guarantee is on their radar, because they talked about it in the This Week in the Realm, I'm pretty sure, is the fact that pets also will not have Rejuvenate properly scale. What are pets? Well, they're things like Ying's Illusions and Luna on Io. So if I just go ahead and pop down an Illusion here, you see that it heals for 90 per tick, and then if I lock in Rejuvenate, it's still healing for 90 per tick. Both of them are. So, yeah, it doesn't work on Illusions. And also, if we go ahead and grab Luna here, Io, uh, Sacrifice, I guess, I don't know, it doesn't really matter. And then throw Luna down next to Fernando. We go from 75 healing per tick to a staggering 75 healing per tick. It's exactly the same. Now, a notable exception to this is Grok with his totems. His totems are not coded as pets. They are coded as just proper deployables, the exact same as something like Barracks Turrets. So these actually do work with Rejuvenate, right? So I put down one totem, 33 per tick, by Rejuvenate goes up to 42 per tick. So Grok is unaffected by this bug, but if you're playing Ying or you're playing Io, uh, it might be best to stay away from Rejuvenate until they fix this bug. More so talking about Ying here. Io, she does the vast majority of her healing with her Moonlight, so it's still worth it to buy Rejuvenate for that but with ying it's a bit more even right you get a lot of healing from life exchange you get a lot of healing from illusions certainly if you're playing focusing lens or resonance please do not buy rejuvenate until they fix this because it will not provide you any value whatsoever outside of the healing you get from your ult that will still be affected but your your illusions they won't be affected so don't buy it on ying but uh, yeah, that just about wraps up this video on the brand new Rejuvenate, which also works on Eevee's Ice Block healing card. <laughs> Please don't ever let me catch you buying Rejuvenate with, with Frigid Field. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's very silly, the, the synergies that Rejuvenate has now. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think about this in the comment section down below. This brand new Rejuvenate rework, because it is one of the most controversial changes of the update for sure. It allows tanks to have a lot more freedom in terms of which items they buy, but it also kind of restricts support items by forcing supports to buy yet another uh, steamingly mandatory item. It's also a lot weaker in late game now, but of course, much fewer credits are being spent on Rejuvenate throughout the match because only a select few people need to buy Rejuvenate now. So there are a lot of benefits, especially also, you know, the new uh, loadout opportunities that exist now with uh, certain synergies like Bulk Up Buck, like we mentioned earlier. Uh, there are a lot of positives, a lot of negatives, and overall it's a very interesting rework. It certainly is shaking up the meta and doing, uh, I guess it's doing its job if they wanted to change the way we play the game and also try and make Rejuvenate. I guess overall ultimately weaker. But yeah, hopefully you found this video to be helpful. If you didn't know about the rework or you didn't know about certain aspects about the rework, now you do. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, do all the YouTube stuff. Uh, check down below as well. I'll have a link to the Paladin Speakinner's Guide playlist, which is a playlist filled with all sorts of guides, including this one about different game mechanics, items, uh, stuff like that. So yeah, don't miss out on that. And with all that being said, thank you guys for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace out. Hey.